Hi, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. This is the third in a series where we talk about some of the new capabilities and features of uh, vital capacity management, uh, the release that we had in July, so version 2.4. And today's session is gonna focus on the improvements we've made to the way we collect data and what we do with that data. So um, yeah, with further ado, let's dig into it. Um, so my name is Per Bauer. Uh, I'm Director of Technical Services at Help Systems, um, focusing primarily on our vital capacity management product or solution. Um, and I've, you know, had several of these webinars before. Um, and, you know, this is, I'm going to present to you today. And um, we have about 30 minutes to go through all the stuff we're going to cover. So um, this is the agenda for today. So first of all, I'm going to do a, a high level introduction of micro capacity management 2.4, since I suspect that some of you are new to our solution completely. It will be a, a you know, a, a good introduction, uh, but also for the rest of you, I guess a, a brief recap will be beneficial. And then we'll focus on the um, new data collection capabilities, as I mentioned, and then at the end, we're going to do a summary. Based on the fact that we only have 30 minutes, uh, I don't think we will have much time for interactive Q&A at the end. Uh, if there is time, I'll certainly do it, but um, I still encourage everyone who have questions or you know, want to do a follow-up or anything to submit that in the the chat box and we'll absolutely record that and, and get back to you with you know response to your questions or, or a follow-up whatever that means um but i don't think we will have time for a, a interactive q a at the at the end uh, but we'll see when we get there so vital capacity management um it's a capacity management solution stretching the whole spectra of capacity management all the way from the more tactical performance management discipline of acquiring performance monitoring data, analyzing that data to make sense of it, and then, you know, do reporting and, and tuning based on that data over to the more strategic planning side of, the th of things. So uh, doing capacity modeling um, based on, on the data that we acquire and do predictions of what if scenarios and, and, um, and um, you know what what the outcome of those scenarios would be um, as all capacity management solution it's focusing on two different main areas so it's about mitigating risk and avoiding risk and predicting risk and and allowing you to deal with that proactively uh, but it's also about efficiency so uncover or or discover any uh, inefficiencies in your environment and allow you to to um, optimize and trim your your um, resources to make the most of, of them. Um, so vital capacity management has been in the market for 18 months now. Um, the first release was in the beginning of last year. Um, when we designed that, because we also had a solution before this with, with uh, the, the, the TeamQuest products, um, the objectives of when we did build capacity, vital capacity management was to create a solution that was simple and intuitive uh, with for users to to embrace, uh, we believe that a wider set of users or set of people should use these solutions, and you know we should push out the some of the capabilities to the people uh, outside the the capacity management group to have them do their own type of analysis. Um, in the same vein as that, we need to deliver useful insights out of the box. So time to value or you know to, to get the product up and running to get to get meaningful information out of it needs to be you know extremely short um, we need to build a scalable and and extensible product because the IT environment keeps growing as every customer we work with there's fragmentation into smaller components like containers or um, etc microservices for example that pushes the boundaries for you know how scalable a product needs to be but also it needs to be extensible because every enterprise customer or large organization have a specific need in terms of what they need to see and how they need to slice and dice the data etc no matter how good a job we do at building 
out of the box support for certain standard features there will always be you know custom content that is 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 in request so we'll we need to be extensible and, and allow you to do that as well um, we also wanted to provide this in a single package because we, we want to make sure that every customer gets the maximum benefit out of the solution. So it should be simple. You know, you buy file capacity management and it will give you the full support for all the things that you need to do. If you look at the architecture and how we do things, so underneath we have a data acquisition layer built of well-proven, industry-proven, uh, scalable components from Apache. So we're using Cassandra as our data store and Apache Kafka as our real-time event stream, uh, where we ingest the data into the Cassandra database um, for later use. We have our own set of lightweight data collectors. We're going to spend time today um, showing those and, and talking about those to uh, some extent. Um, that data is then being written to the Kafka stream and, and put into the database. In addition to those, our own data collectors, we also provide support for vendor data sources. Those are the type of data sources that uh, has become de facto standard for a certain technology. So vSphere for VMware, for example, provides excellent instrumentation for everything that has to do with VMware. And as such, we have an out-of-the-box integration with vSphere and, and pull that data in and make it appear like it's it's in our database. The same goes for CloudWatch for uh, AWS, for example. Um, that's turned on by default for all your AWS EC2 instances out there. And we can you know use that data to to do our job rather than putting our having to put our data collection there necessarily. In addition to that, we can also do third-party data sources. So any third-party monitoring performance monitoring solution or proprietary monitoring solution that you've built uh, could also be integrated we provide a rich set of integration mechanisms you can use database queries if it's stored in a database you can use rest api queries you can use any type of sdk if that is when that is available etc so to integrate with that data source for those two so the vendor sources and the third-party sources are Default approach is to federate those so we don't ETL that data and, and duplicate and store the data a second time in our database. So rather than doing that, we query that data on demand. So when the data is needed for a report or for time some type of analytics, uh, we go to the original source and query the data and bring it back and serve it up through our API. So it's a convenient way of keeping a small foot footprint, um, but at the same time, you know, giving this single pane of glass sort of view of, of all your data. And then on the other end of this, uh, through our API, we have our model solver, which is this black box uh, analytical queuing um, technology engine that creates these uh, queuing models for your data that we then use to do predictions about future demand uh, or future uh, resource requirements based on, on demand that you've defined. Um, so this is sort of the data acquisition and analytics engine underneath all of this uh, that underpins everything we do. On top of this, we have a number of components. Uh, so we have key performance indicators, which is a high level view of your resources from a health risk and efficiency perspective. It's meant to bring awareness to those systems or services or applications that needs extra attention because they are at the at the verge of, of having a, a problem performance wise or they are used inefficiently etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's it's not a it's not a drill down tool where you get all the information in in a single view but it's more you know to bring awareness to what systems needs uh, extra attention we have a performance monitor which is our root cause analysis or real-time and historical data analysis tool where you can bring in data from from any of the data sources that we either you know the data we collect or we federate uh, to look at that data with high granularity down to process level analyze exactly what went on uh, during a specific time period etc do correlation between multiple systems in different time periods etc etc the other end of the spectra is doing the planning side so we have capacity plans which is a uh, provides guided workflows for doing what-if scenarios based on you know growth or migration between different types of platforms or tuning of your hypervisor settings or the way you 
you set up your your uh, VMs running on a system, for example. Um, it's very accurate. It provides very you know accurate results. It's been simplified to an extent where it's you know basically everything is supported through a guided workflow where you just define what the scenarios are that you would like to plan for and what you know the, the system suggests a, a suitable time period for you and then you build your plan based on that. So it's 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 been simplified to an extent where it can be pushed out to users that are less experienced in doing this. And then the fourth component is automated analytics, which is our uh, reporting or dashboarding solution where you can create any type of custom content based on the data that we uh, have access to. Uh, you can automate those dashboards or reports to be refreshed on a regular basis. You can schedule them to appear to be updated on a daily basis, for example, and push out emails to people. You can you know, put it in a custom or a, a custom portal that you've built with this. The, the, the tool comes with a simple portal framework that you can use to put to publish the information to to your end users. You can define different groups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's it's like a Swiss Army knife kind of solution where you can build anything on top of the data that we we um, have access to. So this is the solution. This is how it's uh, the different components that we we use to 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 show the data. So if we look at how we've um, released this or how how the, the product has looked uh, this far. Uh, so we had the two first primary releases of VCM back in 2018, as I said. Um, so we brought out the standard components. And then since then, we've had two major releases. We had one in March of 2019 and one now in July um, this summer. And then we have next one coming out in October. Uh, in each of those, we you know add new features on top of the standard product that we released back in 2018. So the re latest release uh, that we refer to, the version 2.4, was released in July. Uh, it had a number of different features. Uh, there was a new view in KPI called uh, focusing on efficiency. We've talked about that in, in a previous webinar. We improved the support for Azure Monitor. So out of the box, we provide uh, serve up data and allow you to analyze and, and report on, on resources running or applications and services running on Microsoft Azure. Uh, we have a demand calendar component that allows you to track and record uh, information about future demand and use that as, as a basis for your planning and your KPIs, et cetera. And then what we will focus on today, we've introduced a number of improved and, and new capabilities to our data collection. Um, so high forensic, um, high resolution data forensic anal analysis, automatic workloads and process data reduction. We're gonna focus on that today. So new data collection capabilities. Before we move into exactly what we've done, um, we said before that we can you know, take data from either our own data collectors, but we can also federate data from third-party data sources. One thing that we've introduced in July is a standardized performance data view. So now, as long as you build the integration in such a way, so you use the, the right naming standards and the name, the, 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 uh, the right data views, et cetera, uh, third-party data will show up side by side with our own data. So we don't make any distinction between those. So when in those cases where we have default out of the box data views like KPIs, uh, key performance indicators or the overview um, charts in, in our performance monitor, et cetera, uh, those will be populated with third party data just as well as, as our own data. Uh, so we don't make any difference between those. Of course, you know, the metrics needs to be the same and the, the, the same metrics needs to be available, which is not always the case. But as long as they are, you know, we don't make any distinction between our, our own data and third party data sources. And then all that data is exposed through an API which we use with our uh, with our uh, vital capacity management components, but you can also use third-party consumers to to get to that data. So it's a it, it's important distinctions. And now we're truly data agnostic. We don't make any difference between if it's our data or third-party data source. But the data that comes from that third-party data source may not be as rich and as 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 useful as our as, as our data. But that's a, a, a completely different problem, I guess. So what have we done with our data collection? So first of all, to talk about our native data collectors, those are, they collect 
about 100 or 100 plus uh, performance counters for the operating system that they are running on. Uh, it's a single binary, uh, about five megabyte in size. Uh, it pulls the data. In the case of Linux, it pulls this from slash proc. In Windows, it gets it from the PDH libraries on Windows. Um, it formats the data into JSON format and writes the data to this Apache Kafka stream that then streams the data, takes care of the data, and then eventually ingests it into Apache, uh, our Apache Cassandra permanent data store. Uh, all this is done in real time, so the data should, ends up in Apache Cassandra, you know, seconds after it was actually it was collected. Uh, the default granularity for this is uh, to collect data once a minute. You can actually change that. You can go, you know, if you don't need uh, one minute granularity, you can go with five minutes and save some space in the database if if that is your typical use case, etc. But it's it's configurable. Uh, it's important to also. Uh, notice that all communication for this data collector is initiated from the monitored system. So there's only, a, a, you know, all interaction or, or communication happens in one direction. So uh, the, the data collector talks to the Apache Zookeeper about uh, configurations, etc. So every time it wakes up and collects data, it also you know, checks to see if there is any new configurations that needs to be applied to it. Uh, it writes the data to this Apache Kafka stream. Uh, so everything is is happening in one direction. So from the network setup or security perspective, it's it um, should be fairly easy to to um, you know get acceptance for this kind of setup. In addition, in addition to those performance counters that we collect on the system. We also collect process level metrics. So about 20 different performance metrics per process. Um, it's data about, of course, CPU, memory, and IO consumption by process. Also metadata like uh, process ID and what the command was, etc. that started the process. Um, it can be have a separate sample frequency. So you can sample the process data less often if or more often if you want to uh, than the regular performance counter from the operating system so you can have a, a separate sample and retention configuration for your process data it doesn't have to go hand in hand with the with the with the default data collection um, you can limit how many processes we bring in so if you want to save some space on the uh, back-end data store um, you can limit the processes to the top 20 or top 10 or top 50 processes, you can do that top ranking um, based on CPU or memory. So you can say that I only want to see the top 20 CPU consumers uh, processes uh, on my in my database. So you can limit the, the amount of data that is getting saved. You can also, uh, you also have a choice to, if you want to keep the full command of the process. So by default, we keep the, the command that started the process, of course, but you can also have the full command with the full path to the executable that started the process. Um, we use that, uh, we will use that in the next release for a, a, a further improved the workload characterization mechanism that we're working on, um, but it's already now available and it's a setting that you can turn on or, on, on or off. Uh, of course, if you have a lot of processes running with extremely long full commands, um, you know, that's going to take up some space in the database. So it's, it's a way to save data, basically, or to save space, basically. In addition to process level metrics, we can also do plugins. So what is a plugin? It's basically an extension to our data collection where we allow you to run a script that produces a JSON output, could be any type of data, could be technical metrics could be business type of data. So business transaction volumes or application level metrics. Uh, so a script that generates a JSON file formatted accordance, in accordance with our, our template that we provide uh, is then executed every time that the data collector runs. It also executes that script and put that data in on the Kafka stream as well. So it's very easy to extend and augment what our data what our default data collector uh, collects and, and you know add more metrics to that. Uh, that data then ends up in the database and it's you can report on it and use it any way you want to, same way as you would do with our default data. Um, from an admin perspective, it's 
all integrated into the workflows, etc. So you don't need to do anything specific in order to to maintain this. You know, you just need to define those plugins, and and you know, they're completely fully automated using the same administrative in, interface as the rest of the data collection. Um, another th thing that we've added in the 2.4 release is high frequency data collection. So it's basically a way to bring in data more frequently than once a minute, which is our default uh, um, sample frequency. Uh, it was available in previous releases of DCM, but it was uh, done in a less sophisticated way. We also had this uh, this feature available in, in our um, earlier versions of our solutions back in the TeamQuest days. Uh, we could go, you know, sub minute in, in terms of data collection, but uh, the way we do it now is much more powerful. So we still have the baseline data collection, uh, which is one minute by default, could be five minutes as we said before, but that's, we're never gonna change that or that you can't turn that off. So that always gonna be there. So we still, we keep this baseline data collection. And then in addition to that, you can, add or configure uh, an additional high resolution data collection. Um, you have a choice of one, two, five, 15 and 30 second sample frequency. So you can go as low as one second data sam uh, sampling. Um, but you have to look at that, of course, and determine what is the use case and what is the, you know, what type of data do I really need? Of course, you know, with one second data, it's going to be a lot of data points and it's going to fill up your database quite quickly. So you have to be careful and you need to, you know, closely examine what your real needs are there. Um, the high frequency data collection is treated as a completely different data set. So it's when it gets to our centralized database uh, data store, it's stored in a separate data set. It's not aggregated, so we don't care for aggregation of that data. We don't, it's retained to, uh, during a certain time, but you can control that retention separately. So it's, it, does, it doesn't inherit any of the attributes or, or settings from the default uh, baseline data collection. So it's a completely different uh, separate data set that you can maintain. Um, and it's designed to run in parallel with the one minute uh, baseline collection. Uh, we prof practice something we call buffered streaming for that data because uh, if, especially if you go as low as one or, or two second data sampling, it can be quite, uh, can cause quite a lot of network uh, traffic. So rather than sending data every time we sample the data, we store the data locally and then we send the data once every minute. So we send, you know, 60 or 30 or 12 or four data points once a minute instead of doing it every second or every uh, two seconds uh, to save some uh, overhead on, on the network. But this is really powerful and it allows you to do much more with, with our data collectors than we you were able to do before. Before you had to to change the one minute to you know one or 10 seconds and then you had to aggregate that data up to one minute to still get this baseline and that you can keep for, for you know, historical purposes, et cetera. Now we, we do all this in parallel. So what are the use cases for this? Um, the obvious one is you know, low latency or real-time applications where you need to have more granular view of your uh, applications. You have bursts that happens within, that, within a minute and without this high frequency data collection, you, you know, all those things are lost on you and you can't really properly profile your application. Could also be <clears throat> architectures where you have uh, things like containers, for example, you know, or other ephemeral components that has a lifespan that is less than a minute. So they are they are being launched and disappears within that minute. And you know, if you don't have more granular data collection, you're never going to see them, and it will be you know quite mysterious where all this activity came from. So that's another use case. Could also be you know, you're if you're practicing DevOps and you have continuous integration. Um, scenario where you launch new application or new releases on a very frequent basis and you want to have a quick way of determining if there's any an 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 anomalies with a new release, um, you know, having more frequent data collection, of course, is going to help you to do that much quicker and much in a much more efficient way. So there's a number of different use cases. And as I said, you know, you can turn this on and off. You don't run it, you shouldn't, or you're not 
expected to run this all the time. You can schedule this to happen during certain hours or during a short time period when there's, an, an, you know, you need to, to put extra attention to a specific application or a specific set of components in your data center. And then the last feature we're going to talk about when it comes to data collection is the workload characterization. And that's also something that we've had before, but we've also improved this in this release and uh, it will continue to be improved in subsequent releases. So what do we do with work, mean with workload characterization? It's basically a way for us to group process data together in logical groups. So you can group it based in this release, you can uh, group it based on three different attributes. So uh, you can group the data, the log process data based on the login. So the, the user on the operating system that, that was started the process. So basically you get, you know, the, the compound utilization by login or by user. You can do it by command. So the executable that started the, the process. Um, and then you can do it by process group. Process, process group is similar to service. So it's basically, you know, in, on Windows, it would be the, the service manager that you have in, in, in the admin interface, those services that, that shows up there. Uh, if you're running Linux with system D, uh, you have a, a similar concept of a service manager where you, you know, define your services, service units uh, on Linux. And that's where we will read those configuration and group the data according to those. So you will get, you know, grouped data that, that signifies different applications or different services or different um, workloads on your system. You can decide if you want to purge the underlying process data after workload creation or not. So if you want to save space, you know, once you've created those workloads, maybe you don't need the, the underlying process data anymore and you can purge that immediately before it gets stored in the database and before it's sent over the network. Um, you can also here define if you want to collect the full command or not. In the next release coming out in October, we will have an, a fourth type of workload where you can define your own. We called it named workload. So basically you can define your own workload settings based on the full command. You can search for a substring of the full command and define that all the processes that qualifies uh, for this criteria should go into a workload called XYZ. And then that's what we'll store as well. Uh, this is not available yet, but it will be in you know about a month from now. Uh, but you know, in order to do that, of course, you need to collect the full command, and you know, same there as as for the rest of the workload sets. Once you've done that, you can create these kind of reports where you slice the data by application or by user or by login or by uh, service, etc., um, and report on that. So the use cases for doing this, uh, you know, obviously service or application level profiling or reporting. So distinguishing different applications, different database instances or different Java VMs, et cetera, from each other. Uh, could, would be, it's a way for you to do more granular capacity modeling. So our modeling solution, Capacity Plans, is also able to pick up on those workloads. So you can grow a, sim, uh, a single workload instead of growing the whole box and, and by that getting closer to reality in terms of you know what your diff different growth growth scenarios looks like etc um, you can also use it for activity based cost allocation for shared resources so if you have we talked about you know a database server with multiple instances of oracle or db2 running for example and you want to track uh, which of these instances are actually using you know most memory, most CPU, most IO, etc. You can define those workloads and use that as a, as a basis for your cost allocation across your internal customers or different tenants that are using that shared service. So it's it has multiple different use cases for workloads as well. So to summarize, we have all these new data capabilities for our data collectors. Um, we treat third-party data the same way as our own data, so you can use it anywhere you want, uh, all the default views, et cetera, will populate with third-party data if, if um, there is data available, but most third-party data sources will not give you the process level metrics. They won't give you the high resolution data. They won't give you the automated workload sets, et cetera. So if those things are valuable to you and if you see a use case for those, 
I urge you to really take a close look at our data collectors and, and get those installed and, and you know try them out and see what, what they can provide in addition to the third-party data sources. You can mix those, of course. You don't need to have our data collectors across everything, but maybe for those systems, applications, resources where there are a specific need or, or an extra need to do these things, you can get them up and running there. So to end things off, we're running a couple of hours or a couple of minutes over time here. So this is the solution, file capacity management. Um, four components to work with the data and analyze the data and use the data. Uh, underneath, there's a number of shared capabilities that are across all those different components. So we, you have access to the same infrastructure monitoring data across all, the, all of them. Could be you know, physical system, virtual systems, cloud-based, container containerized applications, et cetera. All of those things we can pick up. You can group the data based on logical grouping. So you create your applications, services, departments, whatever, and that they, that those grouping definitions can come from a service catalog, could come from any type of data source where you've mapped individual components to a group, and we, we can use that automatically and synchronize with that to, to allow you to report on, on that level. Uh, we provide predictive analytics and demand calendar to help you keep track of, of future demand and then use our predictive analytics to forecast the impact of those or predict the impact of those uh, demand forecasts that you provided. So with that, just as I thought, we won't have time for an interactive Q&A. Um, I urge you to submit questions in the chat window. Thank you very much for your attention and um, I hope you enjoyed the session and uh, we will get back with um, new webinars of this kind uh, when the next release comes out in about a month from now, as I said. Um, so looking forward to see you back then and thank you very much for today.